No, I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I haven't nailed the title down at this point. Anyway, just as a placeholder, does pump speed impact film performance? The answer may surprise you. That's enough padding. This video is forming part of my performance fundamentals playlist where I seek to form and perform rigorous testing to answer what seem like very intuitive questions in the PC building space. Let's cover the hardware being used to test this principle and how the testing is being performed and then we'll get into the results. This video is really the ramping up back into water cooling for this channel. I used to do two part case reviews with a main air cooled setup video first, then followed by a water cooled setup video second. And it's from the remnants of the ashes of that mess that we're digging up the bones of water cooled systems past to answer the que- I'm strapping an old EK Supremacy EVO to a 6700K with some Arctic MX4, cooling it with a 120mm EK Coolstream SE and pumping water around with a D5 with a 100mm reservoir strapped to it. Then we're hitting it with priority 5 for 15 minutes since that's where equilibrium seems to balance out at. The voltage of the 6700K is locked at 1.28 volts and 4.5GHz where it stays regardless of temperature and that's about it. That wasn't too hard now. Actually, there are some nuances to discuss regarding the loop. It's a strange looking loop with the reservoir at the base of the system sticking out in almost f there is methods of the madness though. When it's in the vertical upright testing position, it is odd granted, but I install CPU water blocks with the system laid down flat, which puts a reservoir on top. Yeah, not so bad now, hey. This makes filling extremely easy since all the bubbles float to the top into the reservoir and when the system has been sat upright and finished being tested, the drain port at the base of the pump now drains the loop through the bottom. There's a cap to the top of the system to help the CPU block side drain without any issues and I can tilt the whole system forward if I need to drain the radiator as well which I won't need to do in between CPU cooler block testing. All of that mess allows the intake area for the CPU coolers, air cooled, CPU coolers to remain clear so I don't need to remove the pump if it was on top and it works so that's all that matters. So with all that out of the way, how did it all go? Just before that, I have four setups being tested and simply put they are 100% pump and fan speed, 30% pump with 100% fan speed, 100% pump with 30% fan speed and lastly 30% pump and 30% fan speed. This gives us the full gamut of higher and lower thermal loads on the CPU water block with the higher and lower pump speeds. Here's how all of that pans out in terms of RPM by the way. I chose 30% and 100% pump speeds just because the pump has a lower limit of around 800 RPM at roughly 25%. So I bumped it up to 30% just to ensure I was avoiding any sort of weird stalling issues that might happen or unforeseen problems that might occur when riding so close to or at the lowest limit. It's also worth noting that at 950 RPM on the pump, it's actually hard to tell if it's running at all. Noise wise when the fan is spinning next to it at low speed so yeah it's very quiet at 30% whereas at 100% it is that noticeable pump whine. The reduction of 70% pump RPM from 3450 to 950 RPM is actually a change of 72.5% which is strangely accurate so any changes between the temperatures may be directly correlated to the change in pump speed if you get what I mean. All of that to say is, at best, if you run your pump at 100% speed compared to 30% speed, you might gain as much as a whole degree of thermal improvement. Oh yeah, that sweet wine of a full speed pump nets you as much as 2% improvement in thermal performance if you round up from 1.7. But even that can't be trusted since it's well within testing tolerance, so they're basically equal, and if you were going to see any performance differences, you'd expect to see them at the more extreme end, at the hotter, lower fan speed testing, but we saw the difference at higher fan speeds, lower CPU temperature testing. So in conclusion, from this specific testing, it appears that the water flow uh, flow rate at lower pump RPMs, D5s in particular, are more than sufficient for wicking the thermal energy away from the base plate of your CPU cooler, or this one anyway. In other words, it's equally as efficient as the flow rate produced by a much faster spinning pump. That's probably related to the relatively low temperatures and wattages we're working with. We're not talking about the engine of a truck or a nuclear power plant or even a kettle. We're talking about a CPU running at 100 watts. Now, there are a few questions that stem from this. 
does this hold with CPUs running at double the wattage, triple the wattage, 500 watts more? You know what I mean? At what point does the water at the lowest flow rate become thermally saturated and needs to be moving faster? Does this happen with a lot more components providing more resistance, such as a GPU water block, more radiators, that sort of stuff? At that point, we're sort of misconstruing head pressure, though, and it's linked to flow rate, so maybe that's more of a side question with a few more factors to consider. Does a difference in temperature become more apparent with poorer design blocks? This Eco Supremacy Evo, despite its age, does have an, an array of fins to increase the surface area of the base plate in contact with the water. Would a cheaper, flat base plate design benefit from faster flow rates? I'd hazard to guess it wouldn't, since it should heat up the water at a slower rate, uh, since there's less surface area, and it would be less likely to thermally saturate any water passing, leading to just higher CPU temperatures. But there are plenty of unintuitive things in the world of cooling, lots of blind spots, like does paint impact the performance of CPU coolers, and are dual fan coolers better than single fan coolers? You can find answers to both of those questions in the video cards in the corner. So there we go. Did the performance similarity meet your expectations, or were you expecting a significant difference? I was expecting to see at least a 5 degree difference in temperature, if not noticeably more, but there we go. So anyway, thank you so much for checking this one out. If you want to support me, please like the video, uh, maybe share it, I don't know if sharing is a thing. Subscribe to the channel, that would be excellent. If you really want to go on above and beyond, there is a Patreon, but by all means don't feel any need to, but by all means a huge thank you to everyone who is supporting me on there anyway. So thank you so much for checking this one out, uh, stay tuned for more like this, I do plan to do plenty more in this arena, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you in the next one, bye bye.